This is Helping of Happiness, episode number 165. Today we have on Brooke Romney from Brooke Romney Writes, and she is an author, a speaker, a blogger, and has so many other amazing things that she does. My favorite thing that she has out right now is her book, 52 Modern Manners for Today's Teens, and it is this awesome little flip book that sits on our kitchen table, and it has a different little prompt of a different manner for each each week or each day or however often you want to flip it. They're so great. Like, for example, here would be an example of one of those manners. Don't leave one person out. Inviting all except one is cruel. Be someone who includes and makes room. If you have a problem with someone, talk to them. Don't just ghost them. Put yourself in that person's shoes because chances are you will be left out someday. And remember, there is always room for one more. And she has 52 of these. I mean, they're so good. Such good tips. And I love it because I can just leave it on my table and literally my kids don't have to hear me nagging them. They can just read the book and learn how to act in different situations. It's so amazing. So I've been dying to share her with you for months. So here she is. Without any further ado, come meet Brooke and then go buy her book. And we have links in the show notes. Hi, I'm Hilary Hess, and you're listening to Helping of Happiness. I am a crazy mom of seven kids who loves to build memories through eating delicious family recipes and going on adventures with my family. On this podcast, you'll be introduced to light-filled people and ideas that inspire me to be a better mom and help me bring family closer together and closer to Jesus Christ. Brooke, I am so happy you could be on today. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. This is such a treat. So Brooke Romney, I've been loving so much her book, 52 Modern Manners for Today's Teens. We keep it on our kitchen table all the time, unless we need to wipe it off. It's the only time it comes off. <laughs> and we have our little manners on there because it gives us such good discussion. And if nothing else, I love having it on there during breakfast when the kids can just be looking at it while they're eating their cereal or whatever else. So let's talk about a little bit just about you and your family. And then I'd love to get into everything with this awesome book. Awesome. Um, So I am a writer and I have four boys ages. The oldest is almost 19 and the youngest is 10. Um, We've moved around the country quite a bit, but we've been settled in Utah for the last eight and a half years It's been a great experience to be in all different places, and we love being close to family now. I started writing, oh, probably, I started writing for a newspaper when I was, had just had my second baby, and then, you know, was kind of in and out, started a blog, got on Instagram, and for the last probably about four years, three years or four years, I've been really focused on empowering parents personally so that they can feel capable and not alone in their parenting journey, especially with tweens and teenagers. And then also focusing on how we can empower our teens to live successful and connected lives. Which we all desperately need, especially because every teen comes with a new set of challenges. I love, love, love my teenagers so much, but everyone, it's like having a teenager all over again. So it's just been so helpful to to have those resources. So tell us a little bit about your blog and kind of like, what, what made you want to start that? Well, actually it's a little bit of a funny story. My first blog was called mom explores Michigan. And, um, I wanted to help the people in our area find fun things to do with kids and families. So it kind of focused on that. I talked about books and some recipes. Um, when we moved to Utah, I realized how many people were doing that so much better than I could do it. They had beautiful pictures and graphics and all kinds of wonderful things. Um, and they were really invested in exploring Utah and my kids had actually gotten a little older. So I was sort of aging out of that side of things. And, um, so I thought I would just stop, um, overall, and then I really missed writing. And I realized that I had some things that I thought might be important, but I was really worried about putting my thoughts and feelings and ideas that were so much more personal to me out on the internet. I've always been someone that doesn't really like contention and I don't like it when people don't like what I say and do. And (laughs) and so it was just like really overwhelming, but I just kind of had that nudge and decided to publish something. And it went well as in a lot of people read it 
but I also experienced some people that didn't like it. And I realized I was a little stronger than I thought I was. And so as long as I was publishing things that I felt like were important, I could take some of the criticism that came with that. Um, I started writing often for myself and then um, newspapers started picking it up, which was great. And then when I had been on Instagram personally, and I thought that it might be a good platform for sharing my ideas. And so I started putting a few things out on Instagram and I'd always been a little wordier. So that like small, right. You only have that. Was difficult <laughs> <laughs> since I've been writing articles. So it took me a few years to kind of figure out how to make that work. And then a few years ago, um, I don't know if everyone noticed, but Instagram kind of transformed from being only a place for pretty pictures to be a place where people would go for information. Also, as that happened, I started writing more, figuring out how to put ideas into a smaller space, started creating a community full of people that were really interested in being the best parents they could be, and also allowing a lot of grace for themselves and others. And it's really created an awesome place that I love to be and um, other parents find as a good resource for them as they go through parenting teens and tweens. Love that. And it's true. I totally go there for inspiration for parenting my kids. So I'm just so glad that you are brave and put yourself out there when there's the trolls that are pulling you down. So I just appreciate that so much. So now you're getting into like a lot of public speaking. I saw you're on the timeout for women, women's circuit. So yes. how did that all come about? Cause that's very different than writing sometimes. Yeah, it is. So actually, um, that's an interesting story about, oh, maybe six years ago, I was asked to speak at a BYU women's conference okay. about using social media for good. As soon as I started writing, I was asked here and there to speak to different like congregations or youth groups. And because I enjoyed it. Can write, of course you can speak, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't so sure about that. Definitely like some trial and error. But when BYU asked me, I was excited. So I prepared well. And in that session, there was a woman who was um, in charge of Time Out for Women. And they were looking for someone who might kind of be in my demographic with some still some younger kids. And they liked, you know, how I was speaking there. And they'd been reading a lot of the articles that I'd written in the Deseret News. So kind of everything came together and they asked me if I would be interested. So that was like three years ago. So I did a full tour with them. It was incredible and something that I am grateful for every day. They asked me to do it again. But then I spoke once and then Corona shut everything down. And then oh. it's been another year. And so I will be back speaking this year. And I am so excited. And I do a lot. Um, I actually now do a ton of speaking. In fact, I'm not a good calendar keeper. So this month I committed to way more things than I meant to because I didn't write them down. And so when someone else asked, I said yes. And my cute 10 year old said, um, mom, you need to remind these people that you still have a family. So that was my cue <laughs> to have a few more boundaries and be able to say, also say no and say yes, but make sure I'm, I'm doing it in the right uh, ratio so that my 10 year old doesn't feel like I'm leaving so often every night. So I love the way you said that you need to remind them. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> so, so, um, trying to do better at, at balancing, you know, motherhood and also being able to do the things that I love and that are important, but it's always kind of that careful balance. And I'm not always great at it, obviously. Um, so kind of like scaling back, knowing like in, while I'm doing timeout for women, that needs to be my focus of being gone and, and then I do a lot of, you know, girls camps and things like that through the summer. So, oh, I love it so much. Well, and I think that's always the trick as a mom is finding that balance. What is too little? What is too much? And different seasons and different opportunities. Oh, it's so tricky. So I feel even more honored that you could squeeze us in when you are so time poor right now. It's just so, so nice that we can talk. Yeah. I always wish that people could ask me to speak at like 11 AM while the kids right? are at school. It'd be much easier to commit than like 7 PM on a school night. So, <laughs> Oh, I I'm with you. So I teach piano lessons part-time. And so those homeschool students are like gold, right? Cause I can totally. teach them all during the day. And so it's not maxing out your after school and you're trying to run your own kids and yeah, that I, I totally get that. 
totally. Everybody, like no matter what you're doing, just finding that balance is, it's always tricky. So it is, it's tricky and it's important to keep finding it. I think so. I love that he's reminding you because that's how I find my balance sometimes too. It's my family. Hello, mom. (laughs) (laughs) I know. I actually love something. Um, I, I wish I could remember who said it, but she said like when it's the juggling act, she said, it's not that you never drop balls. It's knowing which ball is going to shatter and which one will bounce. And I think about that all the time because sometimes it is like, you know, like your family time that can bounce at the moment and maybe your career cannot, you know, and sometimes it's your career that can bounce at the moment. And sometimes one just breaks and you just have to start over. And so I try to remember that. And then another quote that I love is from Scott O'Neill. Um, and he said what he tries to do. So he has been big in the sports industry and he talks about his quote is be where your feet are. And he mm. just says like, you can't, it's not possible to have balance necessarily, depending on what you're called to do at the moment. Um, but it's always possible to be present and like give everything you have to wherever you are. So that's kind of helped me as I've tried to navigate it is, is whether or not I'm working or with my kids or like fulfilling a church assignment is like being all the way there makes a big difference to the people that are in your life and the people that you're working with. And so when I feel discouraged, like I don't have enough time, I just try to remember, like, just be where your feet are, you know, things will work out, balls will bounce and, and you'll kind of be able to come back to sort of like an equilibrium at some point. I think that's really huge because I know if I'm putting my kids on the back burner and then I'm around them and I'm distracted, still trying to do work stuff or still trying to whatever I'm doing on my phone or something else, they really feel that. But if I can put Mm -hmm. it away, even though I'm time poor, at least they feel like when they have me, they have me. And I think that that is really, that's such a good reminder. I love that analogy of the balls dropping too. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) So good. That really helped me in a, in a busy time of life. Yes. Which I always think it'll slow down, but it just seems to get busier. So I guess we just, just keep juggling. We need to get better at juggling or something. (laughs) Well, let's talk about your manners book. I love it. And I'm so, this is kind of funny because I bought it for myself for Christmas and then it was on back order. So it didn't come for a little while. And then one of my very best friends showed up on my doorstep with it the day before that arrived in the mail. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Now I have two copies, which is awesome because now I have one to give away to our friends that are listening. So that worked out really great. But so we both decided we were starting it with our kids at the new year. So it was really, it's been fun because now we're doing it together and we talk about it on our walks in the morning and it's just really fun. And I'm finding that there's so many people that I know that even don't have young kids at home that are still having this on their counter. So it's been really super fun. So, that is so awesome. I love that. I love that you're doing it with a friend. Like how oh, fun is that so to much be on more the same fun. week and be able to discuss ideas and how your kids are responding. That is such a great idea. I love, it's you know, really doing it together. funny to hear the different responses from the different kids. Cause there's definitely yeah. different manners that are trickier with different kids or different families. And for sure. Some of them we were like, Oh, we're actually doing okay at that. Oh, bless. You know, and others totally. were like, Oh, we're really bad. At this. <laughs> we need to leave this one out for a while. So anyway, it was kind of a weekly thing, but now I'm kind of going through it as the, as needed, you know, well, we can just talk about that one real quick. Let's flip to the next one. And so Perfect. I love that you can just use it however really works for your family. So let's tell everybody, like, where did you come up with this idea? What is it? Just the whole thing about. Oh, that's kind of a fun story, actually. So I had been, so I obviously have teenagers and I'm with teenagers a lot. I was in young women's, you know, like there's lots of places that I um, interact with teenagers and as this was way, this was bef- way before the pandemic. And I was noticing just like, I'd obviously noticed things in my own kids. I remember with my first kiddo, probably about 14, literally looking on Amazon, like social norms for teenagers, like things every teenager should know, because I just felt like, you know, some people like just got it and other people just didn't get it. And it was so hard as a mom to constantly be like, are you doing this? Did you try this? No, like this is important. You have to do this, you know, like all of those things and just kind of creates this atmosphere in the home. That's just not very fun um, to always be like them all the time. Right. Yeah. And then like, they're not that interested in listening. So I just thought, (laughs) well, if there was a book, maybe, cause I do believe like 
100% that teenagers want to be successful. Like 100% of me believes that. And um, so I just thought if there was a book that like made it really simple, not like chapter after chapter, but just made it really simple, that maybe it would be something that like my kids would be interested in. I didn't find anything. There were things about like how to be polite or to eat at a table, but none of those like kind of more social norms that I felt like would be really helpful. So I spent a few years just like trying to like sneak it in, but you know, half listening, not always working. (laughs) And then I started observing like other teenagers and realizing like, this just isn't my kids. Like this is, (laughs) wait a minute, my kids are just normal. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I would watch, um, I think it was a, a couple of years ago, it was before Corona and I had given some kids rides and like some had obviously like said hello and thank you. But I had a whole car full of people and probably only half did that. And I thought, ooh, like when you're doing favors for teenagers, like you should probably say hello to the person who's giving you a ride and, and goodbye. And then I saw my son walk up to, he was hanging, like standing with a group of people. And one person walked up and like said hello to like three of the five and then just sort of like dominated the conversation and didn't even say hello. And I knew that person knew the other two kids. And I was like, well, that's weird. Like, why would someone do that? And then um, we had some kids at our home and we were sitting right in our front room as they were leaving and their parents had texted them that they were there. And the kids came up from the basement, didn't even say anything to us and just walked out. And I was like, okay, what is going on? It's like, <laughs> we are having trouble here with just like some very common things that our kids should know. And as I started thinking about it, um, I realized that kids today spend so much time with their eyes down and headphones in that they're just not observing what we observed as kids. I don't remember my mom sitting me down and saying like, you know, when this happened, like if you walk by an adult, make sure you say thank you. And maybe she did, but I don't remember there being like lessons about it. It was just like what you knew you were supposed to do. Just observed that. Yeah. 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 And so, um, I wrote about those three things on my Instagram, just like those three things that I had seen and like parents just like going crazy about it. Like, oh my gosh. Yes. Like, you know, even people like, I know my kid has done that. And I'm saying like, I know my kids do that too. Cause I'm observing <laughs> right, it. Everybody right. else is why like, we're I'm all sure just kids... dying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so they were like, oh my gosh, if you like, let's talk about this more. And, and so I kind of like put it on the back burner, but then I like, as you know, when you have something on your mind, your eyes are open to all the things. Yes. And so I started seeing more of these things. So each week I would share something that I had noticed and people felt like it was very, very, very helpful. And then they were like, oh, I wish I had a reminder. You know, my kid doesn't have Instagram or I always forget to text my kid about this. Or I wish I just had a, like a visual so that they could see it. And it wasn't always just coming from me, you know? And so my mind started turning and I'm like, let's do a book. Like, let's, let's do it. But I knew I didn't want it to be a book that people would read because kids just aren't that interested in that. For sure. And so, and I knew I wanted it to be displayed So there were a few things that like, I needed to figure out a design. I needed to figure out something that would be cute enough and neutral enough that people were happy to display in their home. Um, And then I needed to word it simply enough that if all they read was the manner, it would be good. But then there needed to be a place for like a little bit more exploration and the whys behind it, because my kids are all about why, like, okay, why? So why would I do that? Yeah. Yes. So those were the things I knew I needed. Um, and I just kind of started brainstorming and it all came together. I found people to help me edit and someone who could design it and print it. Um, I didn't know how it would go like putting it out in, um, Corona. I am a self-published author, so I needed to figure out how to fund it. It was all like rather complicated, um, to figure out. And then the response was absolutely blew me away. And I knew it was something that parents and teenagers were craving. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we were obviously unprepared. It was out of stock and hard to get in. And no, I wouldn't say unprepared. I just think it's amazing that it's, I love that it's doing that for you. I think that that is something that's so needed for everybody. And how could you know that every parent was so desperately yeah. and the word would spread so quickly that you had a, such a great resource. I think that's, yeah, it was really, you know, there was paper shortages and printing shortages and all oh, these things Corona that we trying just to, killed all of the things. It's, just, yeah. it's so hard. Cause normally, you know, if you need to reorder something, it's like 
a couple of weeks and now it's like a couple of months and, you know, and so just different things, but um, the response to this as a resource is just absolutely blown me away. And the things that it has done for teens and parents and families, like I am, like, I am grateful. Like it gives me shells every day to be part of people's lives in this way. It's, it's the coolest. So I'm so well, grateful. I love having you in my home. You don't even know you're in there, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I think my Thank happiest you. moment was when I saw my oldest son walk over with his phone and take a picture of the manor that was on. I'm like, oh, he likes this. You know, I was so surprised that because he was obviously not wanting to do it when he thought I was looking, but I caught him and it was really awesome. I love that it is giving some teenagers some independence to live their best lives. I love yeah, it. I, I have think heard it's so, so many it, stories. It really yeah. empowers them in so many areas, whether it's their jobs or their schooling or their friendships or whatever. It's just so good when you can have good manners. You can, I mean, why is Chick-fil-A so busy, right? Totally. It's because of their customer service. It's because they're nice. Yes. You know, yes. it's their chicken is nice. It's great, but it's not, that isn't, the vibe that you the get full experience yeah it totally. is they're quickly anyway so okay so I would love to hear how this has changed your family how how has this book or even just these manners I guess impacted you do you have any stories or ex- examples of that um I think the one about friends has, has been like a really important one about okay, so tell us um, about tell us which one that is just just the one about finding new friends I think that one. You just read that one last week and I loved that one. Yeah. That I think whether it helps your kids change friends or not, it helps them evaluate their friendships and what is important in, in friends and making sure that they're with the right people. Um, meaning people that enjoy you and want you to be around. Um, another one that was a kind of a cute story. My son, one of them texted me from school and he said, Hey, um, will you send me a screenshot of the manner that says, don't leave one person out. And he sent it like he he's pretty low key, but he sent it on a group message because people were, had created kind of like a, a, a group message that where one person wasn't included. And he just sent it to the group and that was it. Like he didn't have just, to get in there and fight or anything like that. Nope. And it was just like, he knew it wasn't cool. Um, a lot of the manners are things, especially like the friendship ones, I think are things that many teens don't do necessarily to be a jerk. They just do it to kind of survive and just to be a part of things, or maybe they truly don't even think about it. I know there's kids that are just like that too. Mm -hmm. And so just having some of those friendship ones, they're like, Oh, wait, that's not a great idea. You know? Yeah. Like I, I need to be aware. Um, I think especially with boys, they're just a little less aware of some of those things. But then there's plenty of boys that are fully aware and it's, it's really hurtful or girls that they hang out with. And so just those types of things. So those have been some kind of fun stories. Um, I do have to say that because I am their mom, it still feels like it's coming from me. Yeah, <laughs> so. I know. I have that advantage of the book. Look what the book says. <laughs> so, but one of the things that like, at least for me as a parent makes me feel good is knowing that I am deliberately teaching these things to my kids. And whether or not they um, like understand them right now, they understand the importance of them to us and in our family culture and in our family values. And I know there are things they will take when they're not in their, when they're not necessarily in our home. Um, I gave one to my college student when it came out, he um, in the summer and he read the whole thing. He said he absolutely loved it. And he put it up in his um, apartment. And it was just like the sweetest moment oh, for I me. I love that support. Yeah. And he, um, and he was like, mom, these are so good, which is hilarious. Cause they're all things I tried to teach him through the high school years. <laughs> all, Cause you were a horrible. No, just kidding. <laughs> like those are all the things that we tried to bring up and wanted him to know that he wasn't totally interested in internalizing, but as an adult in his own space, this has been something that he's like, of course, like he wants to live a successful life. He wants to be a contributor. Now it's up to him and he finds it so valuable. So I think it has been like, it's really blessed our family in multiple ways. Um, and just so grateful for the ways that it's helping other families, especially when it's not at all coming from their mom. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I love, I love that. I think anytime that it's, you can point to somebody else, you know, it's just like teaching my own kids. Piano is a disaster, right? But I can totally. teach anybody else's kids all day long. You know, it's just different <laughs> it's so true. when it's coming, when it's not for mom, but Oh, I love it. Okay. So let's talk about like, do you want to even just can read us three or four of the manners or just let's talk about just a couple more specifically just so they can kind of get an idea of what else is in there. I love the friendship ones. There's that one. Yeah. And I think it's the same one you were talking about. We just did with our family a couple of weeks ago. It was about finding friends who really value you and letting go of the ones that really aren't good friends to you. And we, that week, one of, I mean, I think it's happening all the time, honestly, with these teens, it's so frustrating, but that week, one of my sons was having an experience with a friend that just didn't treat him with respect, you know, and my husband and I are like, go look at the thing on the table. You know, this is, (laughs) (laughs) you can be kind to this friend and he can be included in the group, but you don't hold someone close to you that is not having your best interest at heart and doesn't treat you with respect. So anyway, I love, I love the way you said that too. I love the way that you said you can be kind to someone and you can include them in the group, but they don't have to be like in your face all the time. Yeah. I don't think you need to invite them as your best friend to know the longings of your soul or, you know, they don't have to be the one that you invite, you know, when you're doing a small thing with a couple of friends, but you know, if you're having your big group of friends, I surely wouldn't want to leave someone out that I mean, they haven't done anything to totally damage your friendship right. or something. They're just not right. nice a lot of the time, right? Anyway. <laughs> exactly. I mean, like teenager nice. You know what I mean? I don't know. A hundred percent. It's so tough with a hundred percent. Different, a different yeah. level of a friend. There's a few that have had some really like fun experiences aside from some of the friendship ones, but one that comes to mind was a story that a a gal sent to me just over Instagram, and she just. They were doing the manner, um, know yourself, which is the one, if someone asks you what you like or what you you're into that, you should have an answer. Mm, and so I need, to, I need to read that one. <laughs> we haven't done yes, that with our kids it's yet. so good for adults. Like, and so she was just saying like, so they'd gone over it as a family and she has teenagers, but she also has a younger son. And so like, they were just helping their kids figure out like what answers they might give, which I think is such a great skill as a parent to help your kids. Yes. understand and be able to vocalize like what they know So going over that. And she was with her six-year-old like out and somebody was like, Oh, what do you like to do? And she, and he like totally had an answer and he was so proud of himself. And he's like, mom, I know myself like, and it was just such a cute experience. She's like, we weren't really even doing it for my six-year-old or doing it for the older kids, but like just seeing like like in front of her face, the confidence that comes when you are able to confidently answer questions from adults and from other people. And she was like, it was just such a powerful example of like why this matters, like how the whole reason I wrote this book was to, for one, to give parents um, a resource and, and a way to do this in their home that felt accessible. But my main focus is to give teenagers confidence in navigating the world. And She's like, just to see a six-year-old and the confidence that brings, like next time somebody asks him, he's going to know. And, and when he said it, right, there's all this positive feedback. Oh, that's so great. You're so smart. You know, all these things. And that's what happens to our teenagers when they have good manners. This isn't, some of it is about like just how important it is, but honestly, like the biggest part is giving them the confidence that then gives them all the positive feedback. So they feel good about themselves. They're the people that other parents want around that kids are attracted to. And then it like spirals into more confidence, self-worth, understanding of who they are. And then they're able to go out and be the people they're really supposed to be instead of the kids who are so worried and anxious and nervous about who they are that they can never get outside themselves. So that was just a really cute example, like a very obvious example of why some of these manners are so important. I think I, I love it also that it really can span all the ages. I mean, some of them are a little more technology based and obviously, well, hopefully, I mean, uh, anyway, my four-year-old does not have a phone yet. (laughs) Some four-year-olds might, I don't know, but mine doesn't, but you know, so that might not necessarily apply to him on maybe some of those other ones, but as far as like that one, it totally does. Or there was one that we read earlier that was about not having your device be loud when you're in a public place. 
And that was really good for my four-year-old because yeah, there are times when we've been in a, even this morning in a long doctor's visit for his brother. And yeah. so I'm just, okay, I got to keep you busy because you're crawling on the wall here. <laughs> but I, you know, we can't turn on the sound. You can do it on the phone, but we're going to do it without sound because we're at the doctor. And it, it's just, it's just so good. I think totally. for those reminders to just keep. Well, and even like, you know, there's a tip about um, nothing online is private. And actually this mm-hmm. has been like very, very important to a lot of families where they said, I know we've talked to our kids about this like before. But having it like in black and white, so clear as a reminder to them, um, a mom actually just sent me a message about how this happened to their, I don't know if it was a son or daughter, to a son or daughter. And she went through that experience and she was like, I know better. Like, I know better. I shouldn't have done it. Um, I Like, I should have been more careful. And she's like, between the messages from us, the black and white message, like on our counter and then having the experience, you know, sometimes as a parent, it's just knowing, like, even when things go wrong, because they still certainly will, that you've taught, like you've tried, you've put the effort into it. You can go back and it's not like, and I told you so, but it's more of like, you know, this is why this has been so important to us because when you don't follow this or when you are the one that, you know, shows your friend, the rude text somebody sent about them, And now you're in trouble by everyone instead of the person who sent the rude text, you know, we've gone over that situation, you know, and I've I've tried to help you. I've tried to get in front of, you know, the problem. Um, Sometimes it just feels good as a parent to know, like you're doing what you can. Your kids are still going to make dumb choices because they're 12 to 18. They're learning. And it's just part of, it's part of the plan. But being able to say like, I tried, I taught, I'm going to go back. I'm going to reteach. You know, there's a lot of, um, confidence and power that comes from that as a parent too. Yeah, no, I, it it brings me such a sense of relief. Okay. We are teaching them. We are discussing and sure. If there's something else that comes up that I need to throw in there that maybe we haven't got to yet, or I don't know, timing, we just talk about it, but at least I know we're actively doing something all the time. And that's just, thank you for taking that load off my shoulders. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and I love to like, even with younger families, um, I've actually found the kids who are most vocally receptive to the book are probably ages like nine to 12. Oh yeah. Like like they think it's very cool because being a teenager sounds like something that's awesome. So they're like, oh, like this is what teenagers are supposed to do. This is what you need to do as a teenager. Yes. Yes. I think like the older teenagers are taking it in, but maybe like less, like they don't want their parents to know how much they like it or how much Mm -hmm. it matters to them. Mm -hmm. But like that nine to 12, like if you can grab them right now and start teaching these things so that they're prepared and ready. I mean, I just think in my mind, like how cool it's going to be for my 10 year old to have gone through this book like four times, maybe if we do it one a year before he enters into the world of, you know, cell phones and drama and all those things. Like he'll just have such a different sense of self than my other kids had where he like knows who he is and has been hearing this for so long that it will feel like something that should be natural, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I hope so too. I hope this is just the culture of our family that just sticks with them forever. That would be so great. Yeah. Oh, this is so awesome. Okay. Were there any more that you wanted to cover that you were thinking of? Um, well, pitch in has been maybe every, Oh, I love the pitch in one. I, yeah, that (laughs) one's so good. Yeah. Talk about that one. That might be every mom's favorite. Um, man, my kids did not like that one. (laughs) No, that is every kid's least favorite manner. But one of the cool things that I have seen and have had messages about, um, well, for one, my nephew, so my nephews are younger and my sister-in-law started the book back when it came out, um, like in September, she was one of the first ones that had it. And she was like, I don't know if this is going to stick, but ever since we've had the pitch in manner up, like my boys, when I'm making dinner, are like, mom, how can I help? Like, what could oh, I do? And bless. so, so fun to be able to see that. I think with a lot of teenagers, we're going to see it not as much in our home, but I have had multiple people message me about like getting thank yous from youth leaders about like, Hey, your son was so sweet. He stayed and put up all the chairs. Your daughter was so awesome. She asked like if she could help clean up before she left this time. And the cool thing about that is that when we positively reinforce those things, so like those leaders certainly said to those kids, like, 
this is so great. You're so amazing. Thank you so much for doing that. Then they sent the text to the parent. So the parent was able to reaffirm yes. like how grateful they were that they were pitching in, that they were seeing needs and how cool that was. Like that is a positive feedback loop. Like when they get the chance to be the guy to, mm -hmm. you know, it takes two minutes to help at the end, but there's so much positivity that comes from it, from the people that you're working with, then to your parents, you know, and all of a sudden you're seen as the guy who like always helps. So that's a, that's a cool thing to be seen as people yeah. like the people that are always willing to help. So, you know, just a little <laughs> confidence boost. And that, what I love about the pitch in one is you don't have to be gregarious. You don't have to be outgoing. You don't have to be the center of attention. That is a way for someone who is even like a little shy or quiet to just quietly do quietly something serve. that gives them like a real boost in who they are and who they, you know, know they could be. So I love that. I think that is so great. And I, I think it's so good. I talk to my boys because there's a lot of times it, after their youth nights when maybe there's a bunch of chairs and stuff in the gym and then they automatically just turn around and start playing basketball. So I said, well, what if you just said quick to your friends, hey, let's hurry up and clean up these chairs and then we can have the whole court quicker or, you know, just totally ways to make it to your teen advantage, <laughs> but yes. also helping out the people that have spent a lot of time trying to prepare a fun evening for you before you're going to yeah. go on and do your second evening of fun doing your basketball. But I think, you know, if even a couple of the teens are starting to help. It's going to spread to their friends yeah. and their friends are going to start doing it and start noticing. And so I think that's, what's neat. Maybe we can all yeah. be putting these bugs in our kids ears <laughs> and then be this great well, and I actually army like, of kids doing great things. Like when you said that, I honestly thought, so a lot of people in our community have this book just because a lot of people know me and Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bought it when I put it out, we've got it in our Costco's like, so, so there's a lot of people that have it in their home. And I just thought how cool, whether the kids fully internalize it and act on it or not, how cool to have, you know, hundreds of kids in our school, knowing these manners, doing these things. There's a ton of teachers of middle schoolers that have this on their desk. Oh, and they that's brilliant it. as a teacher. And isn't that such a, I mean, yeah. I, I have had the sweetest messages and one um, message from a middle school teacher. So he got it. He was like one of the first people, like he ordered it pre-order and everything and he had it. And when he read the first manner, which is introduce yourself, the kids stopped to listen and literally stood up some of them and clapped when he said oh. that like everyone feels, I think it says like everyone feels an outsider, everyone feels like an outsider. And when you introduce yourself, you're a gift. And like some of the kids stood up and clapped and they are, kids are clamoring like for connection and for how to be better and how to do better. And so I love the idea. I have a whole um, middle school that bought them for their teachers oh next year. Oh my gosh, that is so, so Every cool. teacher has the manner and can flip. And, you know, even if like only a couple kids like get it, you know, or understand or even pay attention. Um, there's such a ripple effect by one person being the one that does the right thing. So love that the dominoes love it. So good. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. So what are you up to now? Where can we find you all these things? Yes. So, um, Brooke Romney writes on Instagram. Mm -hmm. We have a really fun community there. Um, if you're interested in like older articles, gift lists, things like that, not old, old, but just Instagram is not searchable which yeah, makes it really difficult. Yeah, yeah. So I have a website that is searchable, brookromney.com, where you which can find- Which has so many good things. I was all over that this week and it's wonderful. Yeah. Tons of resources um, for parents and parenting teens. And um, so those are mostly the places that I'm on. And then I'm touring with Time Out for Women and you can get my book on Amazon um, and at Costco's in Utah, Arizona, and Idaho. So love it. I know Amazon's fabulous. It just comes right to your door. Yeah. Yeah. It's so great. And I also best. have a book that I wrote, um, last year. I like me anyway, embracing imperfection connection in Christ that, um, really has changed the lives of a lot of women. And that is on Amazon right now too. So. That's my next read. I can't wait. <laughs> we have some trips coming up and I want to read that while I'm traveling. Yes. It's going to be great. People love the audible version. I read it. Um, it's quick, you know, and so, yeah. you know, on a walk or doing laundry. So that I, that's, that's where my heart and soul went. Um, it's, it's my story. So that one is always fun for me to 
to share with people when people are like, Hey, how did you get to that place? Um, that pretty much gives you every detail you've ever Okay. Seen, I so. can't <laughs> wait. I would love to read that because it was the manners is how I found you. So I'm really excited to, to read Yay. your other one. That's going to be so awesome. Thanks so much. Okay. So, um, was there anything else you'd like to share or did we? No, that's perfect. It? Okay. Perfect. Do you Thanks, have Chloe. just a couple minutes for our three helpful and happy questions? Sure. Yeah. That'd be okay. Okay. So I love yeah. to do this because our blog covers family recipes, travel tips for families, and houses our podcast archives, and then also cool. any kind of like random family home hacks we talk about. So now we cool. get to have your take on these things. It's always fun to hear from uh, someone else. Okay. Oh no, I guess it's to get to know you a little bit. So okay. it's not super hard. So first one is what's your favorite food or meal? So that's not like too scary, but maybe a really no. hard choice. Okay. My favorite food or meal. So if we're thinking like treats, I always go to, um, gummy candy. That's like a go-to. Okay. Uh, food or meal. Like I love like a really like funky taco or a great sandwich. Um, I love like a really good salad too. Like mm, I'm, me too. I'll choose those often. So yeah. Yeah, kind of simple, eat, but I like. We could eat together anytime. So, are you more yeah, like I'm a sour a, patch person, or like a Swedish fish, um, or any? So, like, gummy? ideally, chocolate covered gummy bears are number mm, one. The cinnamon ones, um, or just the regular no, ones? No, regular cinnamon. chocolate covered gum, gummy bears, <laughs> and then like gummy bears, like gummy strawberries, um, and I will also do sour watermelons. So. Oh yeah, those those sound really good. <laughs> Oh, okay. Let's go on to travel. What's the best trip you've ever been on? Or you can do dream vacation. So the, the coolest trip I've ever been on, my husband and I got to go to Africa and that oh. was like, absolutely blew my mind, uh, cooler than I would have ever dreamed it could be. So that amazing. What did you guys do there? Did you yeah, go on so a safari my, or was it a service yeah. mission? Oh, no. So my in-laws had been serving a mission in Africa. So we went over when they were finished. Um, so we did like three days of safaris. We went to the, one of the seven wonders of the world. We, I mean, it was, it was truly just, I, I can't even, it's hard to even say how incredible it was. Cause you just had to, I feel like I was in the Lion King. Like it was just my so fun. boys. That's like their dream of their lives is to go do something yeah. like that. Yeah. Oh. That it was. Absolutely. So what phenomenal. country were you in when you went over there or did you go to a few different? So places? we went to multiple countries. We went to Kenya, we went to Zimbabwe and we went to South Africa. So oh my we did, um, the safaris in Kenya. We did, um, like zip lining and bungee jumping in, um, Zimbabwe and saw like Victoria falls. It was one of my favorite places I've ever been. And then, um, we ended in South Africa with like history and, um, history tours and more of like the city feel and it was it that's was like really the phenomenal. perfect mix of all things in the yeah. trip oh I yeah love it. it was really great so that was that was amazing and then um with my family we recently took everyone to Maui um and we all went and <sighs> it was so absolutely just as good all, and Puerto Rico though was surprisingly like really awesome too so we've done just a couple bigger trips and then my son, um, for graduation, he wanted to go to Maine, which oh, sounds fun. funny, but it was, it was amazing. In fact, I'm going to write all about it because I feel like it's like a hidden gem Yes, and it was phenomenal. We did the coolest things and it's not crowded. And I loved that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. actually a lot of people from Texas that go in the summer t- trips to Maine, I think, cause it's so mm-hmm. hot here. It just seems like such a neat, beautiful place to go in the summertime. Yeah. I absolutely and I love, love it, that it's so. not busy because busy is always a little bit more stressful so yeah. you get all your kids with you and everything so yeah it, and it's full of adventure so if you're like an adventuring family mm. like that was it was amazing okay so. last one do you have a home hack for us yes I do actually but it is my laundry hack and oh we, just started we all need it. laundry help yes <laughs> I, do. I actually have like an entire blog post of laundry tips but um, my biggest laundry tip is to completely ignore it. (laughs) Yes. Well, that's kind of what I was doing. Um, but my biggest laundry tip is to, even if you're going to do your children's laundry, only do one person's laundry at a time Hmm. because the separating was taking so much of my life. 
And what I realized is like, even so like, as my kids get older, I do, they do their laundry, but sometimes I'll do it if they're really busy or working Mm -hmm. a lot or whatever. But if you just have them have their own laundry basket and it was like hard for me to not fill the washing machine. Um, it's like so worth it to just do it on like a lower level of water (laughs) because it's all done. And then it all goes into their room and either they can fold it. Or even if you're the type of mom that wants to fold it, you're just folding it. And then it just goes in their room. It's lovely. That is awesome. That is awesome. So so that's my, that is my, love that. our laundry system. I mean, it's kind of a system. Everything's washed. It's all together. One of the kids sorts it during the week and everyone has a basket and then they're supposed to fold it. But sometimes when they don't get to it, it's still the mountain in the laundry room, which drives me, but usually all clean because we get it washed. The washing happens. It's the drying. Anyway, it's been so fun to have you on, Brooke. Brooke is the greatest, right? So good. I loved, loved learning from her so much. So what do you need to do now? Go buy her book. Go down to our show notes. Click the link in there. Get the 52 Modern Manners for Today's Teens. And then also, I've been reading her other book, and I really love it. It really is empowering for parents, moms especially, I feel like. And I I think it's really good if you're just feeling a little down and out about being a mom, read that book. It really does lift you up. It's fantastic. It's called I Like Me Anyway. So we've got a link to that in the show notes as well. So thank you for being with us as always. I just love having you here. And if you would like to go head over and give us a rating and review in your favorite podcast app and have a fantastic day.